So welcome to today's um, webinar, which is um, from the Coalc Alliance. Um, and I'll explain more about what this is now. We are going to be talking about um, suicide so and suicidal behaviour. So if you find that this is um, overwhelming emotionally, I would advise that you ring the Samaritans on 116, 123 or contact Papyrus who are there 24-7. We're going to be talking about cocaine, which is a class A illegal drug, and this information in no way condones or glamorizes any drug use, but it is aimed at harm, at harm reduction and to prevent suicide. So what is COALC? We use the, the um, COALC as an abbreviation for cocoethylene, which is the name of the unique toxin that's created or metabolized in the liver when cocaine and ad alcohol are taken together. It's the only psychoactive. Um, it's the only psychoactive substance that is created entirely in the human body. The chemical name for alcohol is ether. So as you can see on the bottom, and um, there are no pharmacological differences between powder and co powder cocaine and crack cocaine. It's only in the way that they are taken. So mixing uh, cocaine and alcohol together is one of the most common forms of polydrug abuse. People often mix these substances together because one will allegedly reduce the negative symptoms from the other. However, the resultant co cocoethylene moves through the blood and into the brain and increases the risk of sudden death by about 25%. And it's now being acknowledged in the UK as a causal link to self-inflicted death or suicide. We know that suicide is the biggest killer of men under 35. Various studies have shown that higher testosterone levels are associated with an increase, increased aggression and risk taking. Adolescent boys in particular are more likely to use substances to a dangerous degree because the areas of the brain that handle impulse control and planning don't completely mature until mid to late 20s, which means that they are more prone to making spontaneous decisions. This age group are also more inclined to need social inclusion, which makes peer pressure and being, being accepted more important to them during this time. Another factor we believe is that men are less likely to um, ask for help than women, uh, particularly if they're having mental health problems. Um, men also are less likely to divulge feelings to their friends and family and tend to have less and smaller diverse social networks to lean on. All of these factors play a role in externalising distress with mechanisms such as alcohol and drug use. So although alcohol um, is one of the most uh, widely available legal drugs in the UK, in this country and predominantly the world, it is uh, one of the biggest risk factors for death, ill health and disability among 15 to 49 year olds in the UK. Excessive drinking is seen as an accepted part of masculine behaviour and coping, and it's well documented that men often use this to mask their insecurities or demons. In the UK, approximately twice as many men die of alcohol specific causes than women, and that's from the World Health Organisation, who estimates that roughly 55% of domestic abuse per perpetrators were drinking alcohol prior to the assault. In a report published by the Suicide Prevention Consortium last year, their initial um, research confirms that there is a relationship between alcohol and suicide and uh, the impact of long-term alcohol use on the immediate effects of drinking. 
Although it's a complex issue and varies on a wide range of factors, we note particularly that heavy episodic binge or binge drinking is associated with the likelihood of attempting suicide among, amongst adolescents and that people who are dependent on alcohol are approximately 2.5 times more likely to die by suicide than the general population. Attitudes towards drugs have changed in younger people and, and in older people as well. Twice as many British adults now support legalisation of can cannabis than oppose it. According to polls, which reveals a winding gulf between public opinion and drug laws. Often cited as a gateway drug, many adults have a more relaxed, more relaxed views around its recreational use and is seen more of a natural um, healing substance. Um, this is about uh, cannabis now. However, it's still a illegal drug and mostly obtained via street dealers or internet sources and therefore exposes buyers to other types of drugs such as MDNA, ketamine and coke, which if a young person is already experimenting with one illegal drug, perhaps trying one more doesn't seem like a massive risk, especially when in the company of other keen socialites looking for the next drug. With cocaine, um, more adults in Britain than anywhere else in Europe are now taking cocaine. What we refer, we refer to as rec recreational users generally use powder cocaine, which is usually snorted, sniffed, bumped or keyed. People engaging in casual cocaine use don't often see themselves as having um, a problem or being addicted. Um, even though they might not indulge during the week, the effects of both drugs will continue to remain in their system for many days and even weeks and will continue to negatively affect their health and demeanour because of the coke cravings. Those who try to quit cocaine often relapse when spending time with friends that continue to drink, um, especially, if, uh, like, especially if the drinking is at low as their inhibitions. So being in a pub or at a festival when drinking alcohol, it's become the very accepted norm. And um, just to have a sniff and often, often encouraged by their mates to prolong their drinking capacity and keep going for longer, sometimes for days if they are out on a sesh. They might not feel as drunk because of the energetic and alert feeling of the coke masks the effect of the alcohol, which means that they could be drinking lethal, lethal amounts of alcohol without realising. Cocaine is still glamorised in today's media and more TV series and films portraying the use of partying and not the darker side of addiction or withdrawal. Even Elon Musk thinks it's funny. Whereas 20 years ago, it used to be the drug of choice of the rich and famous, but now prices are a lot lower and the purity is higher than ever. So you could easily get a gram of cocaine for about 40 or 50 pound. It's seen as a, its availability has seen unprecedented levels across the continent, making it the second most common illegal drug behind cannabis. Dealing is even easier now with smartphones, as I showed on the previous slide. And that's risen even more since lockdown on apps like TikTok, Snapchat and Instagram. And people are even dropping it off at homes like a pizza delivery. So a 2019 study found that cocaine is taken by 70% of all UK drug users. But despite this high number of regular co cocaine users, only 14% seek help from health care professionals. We believe that's because people don't feel as if they've got a problem uh, because they're only doing it at weekends. But cocaine itself is highly addictive. So they might not realise that this stays in their system for uh, and their brain for seven to eight weeks, even though it doesn't show up on a urine sample after three days. 91% of cocaine users are aged between 19 and 45, 
and they were also found to abuse two or more other substances alongside cocaine, most commonly alcohol. Physically, alcohol shows re, um, slows reaction time, the reflexes, reduces inhibitions, impairs judgment and numbs pain. Whereas cocaine gives an intense and energetic high, feeling invincible. The alcohol enhances the euphoric, euphoric effect since it acts indirectly on the GABA re receptors therefore increasing the release of dopamine so that when the cocaine is added, it gives the most pleasurable rush. The self-reported high associated with these two drugs is way more intense than either taken alone, which is why it's so popular. But what goes up must come down. The alcohol creates confusion, anxiety and dehydration, while cocaine increases risk taking restlessness, irritability and aggression, which is why we're also looking into the possibility, the possible links with domestic violence. While the cocaine blocks the, re, the reuptake inhibitors, the dopamine and serotonin or the feel good chemicals in the brain, this causes the come down and reinforcing the need for another hit, then another and another. Depletion in these neurotransmitters can cause a chemical depression and severe and erratic mood changes if combined with sleep deprivation. And lack of nutri nutrition can also result in them feeling overwhelmingly suicidal. So this increases the blood, blood pressure. Um, so yeah, the co cocoethylene can increase the blood pressure and build up toxins in the body and put the stress on major organs, particularly the cardiovascular and the liver itself. You may have heard of the DJ um, and music entrepreneur Jamal Edwards, who was aged 31, who died just over a year ago from a cardiac arrest after a late night cocaine and drinking session, where he became paranoid and agitated and began throwing objects around the room before falling unconscious and sub subsequently died. This is called an excited or an, an uh, agitated delirium, which first responders in the US are uh, trained of. We're actually exploring the possibility of a suicidal delirium occurring in, in the come down similar in the pathology to the excited or agitated delirium, which is now the accepted term in the US to describe the emotional agitated state related to the drug consumption, particularly in stimulants uh, uh, and the, co the result of the co cocoethylene. So these three young men had never met each other, but they shared so many similarities. All three were from very close and loving families and each had a massive zest for life and invested in their futures. None of them had any obvious mental health issues and had everything to live for. But each of them also liked taking cocaine when they were out drinking with their mates. Their stories are linked in on our website. Co-alkaline um, was set up by myself in January 21 um, and comprises Jacob's mum, Nicola Abraham, who's been campaigning for more awareness around the links with cocaine related suicide since Jacob died in 2017. When I met Tom's mum in uh, Nicholas Murden in 2019, it was a local suicide and self-harm forum, we decided to find out more why there wasn't any more information available. It was during lockdown and we had a captive audience and we managed to um, do a survey online, which was responded to by over 800 people. And although it doesn't, um, Respond, you know, although it doesn't represent the amount of people who have died, it does represent the amount of people who have been affected by this. And I'll show you the results of that shortly. Sadly, Mandy's son, Sean, died in 2021. 
and she had many questions which were answered when she found our website and joined our campaign in March 2022. These are the results of the first and second surveys. The first one is the one I just mentioned, um, which was done in the Comtaft Maganog area of South Wales. And the other one that um, Mandy and um, Nadine did in the Rossendale uh, area of Lancashire. So we joined them together. Um, and what was spooky was the fact that the percentiles were very similar in both um, surveys. A staggering 74% knew of somebody who had died by suicide after taking cocaine and alcohol. We know that's not the actual deaths, but like I say, we know that that's the amount of people affected by the deaths. It showed us that 86% of the deaths were male, and it seems like um, the main ages are between 18 and 30 that are more at risk. A key factor was that over three quarters of the deaths did not have any pre-existing mental health diagnosis or contact with services. The reason that's quite shocking is because where and, and Papyrus and Samaritans on the line will confirm the majority of, of uh, suicide prevention material focuses around help seeking behaviour. What we what we say is that if people don't realise they've got a problem or that they need help, how are they going to seek that help? So 94 percent felt there was more um, awareness needed of this issue. And what we assert is that suicide preceded by alcohol and cocaine use is is a preventable cause of death. So why isn't more being done? to address this issue, why isn't the more known about it? The first thing is, is that the evidence um, doesn't marry together. There are complex issues with inquest re reports that affect the ONS statistics. Pardon me, my teeth. When a coroner looks at a self-inflicted death, they have to ascertain whether that person intended to in end their life indefinitely. Quite often where drugs and alcohol are involved, there could be a narrative or accidental death recorded rather than a suicide. So that doesn't factor into the suicide statistics. There's another issue around toxicology screening that is not always taken in the autopsy. It seems to vary in different rate regions and, cir and circumstances of death. So it's something that we would like to see standardised. Again, the recreational use of cocaine, even though its use is very popular, is still very much an illegal drug. So it's likely that users won't seek help or even believe that they have an addiction or mental health issues. This also has a massive impact on the bereaved families, often from very close and loving families, such as the ones I represent. If they find out their loved one has taken cocaine after their death, it's not only the general shock, a dreadful shock, but increased stigma and perceived shame of the drug use can prevent them from accessing the support that they need also. There's a bit of a conflict as well with um, the, the substance misuse policies and the suicide prevention policies. Um, like I said earlier, um, suicide prevention is around help seeking behaviour. And um, previously, they've been nervous of citing a causal link in case it's seen as promoting means. This is not the case um, what, because we believe that if, if people knew what the danger was of them uh, becoming suicidal in the come down, that they probably would either prepare for it or not, maybe not even do it at all. This is something that needs to be addressed in order to agree an effective strategy that can, it can include these preventable deaths. Although health boards now have um, what they call co-occurring provision, where mental health and substance misuse services emerged, however, they tend to focus on trauma-related addiction of heavier drug use, such as opiate and crack, whereas recreational drug use is often rejected by services. 
in particular GPs who may send somebody away if they're under the influence, which could impact them drastically if not offered support. Due to all of the issues above, the research is quite limited in the UK. However, with the publication of James Bailey et al paper from March 2021, which concluded that the need for increased public education and public health interventions to address alcohol and cocaine use in suicidal acts. We're pleased to say that we are now partnered with the University of South Wales and doing, currently doing a literature, literature review to scope out what further research needs to be done. We've actually got a meeting with them next week to discuss where we go from um, the information that we're receiving next week. We're also supporting our third founding partner in Lancashire, the Ginger Heart Foundation, who are requesting an Article 2 enhanced inquest in an effort to explicitly link Sean's coca ethylene levels to his suicide, which we hope will then trigger a Regulation 28 report to, the pre to prevent future deaths and help to shape future suicide prevention strategies at governmental level. We also hosted a conference at the University of South Wales last July, which was well attended and the feedback was really positive. We had three panels on the day, one from the bereaved families, one from the lived experience slash survivors who had taken cocaine and talked openly about their suicidal experiences. And then the third one, which, which was the professionals, which was the um, the the Chief Executive Director of Samaritans, alongside um, a prolific um, Professor Julia Lewis, uh, who sits on uh, the government uh, drugs misuse strategy, I believe, um, and also Claire, Co uh, Claire, sorry, Kerry Fowler of the um, Cumtaf region, um, suicide and self harm coordinator. The panels were all recorded um, but, and hosted by the Central Club, um, Colin Mays, and it's worth checking out the the um, each of the podcasts, particularly the one from the lived experience users. They've reached nearly 5,000 views from the key target audience as well, which is predominantly young men. Um, the panels are linked on the website, so if you want to uh, check out those out later, they're on the first page of our website. We've produced some um, resources which uh, include posters for the back of pub doors. This is an old slide actually, it's been updated since then and we've got um, cards with the um, uh, QR code on. And what that does is takes um, the user to a crisis response on our website. Um, there's also plenty of information on there. If anybody wants any of these um, these resources, please get in touch with me after the um, after the webinar, and I'm happy to send them out to you. We also can continue to consult various other leading professionals and organisations like we are today to ensure that our work is current and based on emerging data and trends and eagerly await updates from Professor John and the South Wales Coroner's Office in their data review so that we can in include them in our evidence base. In South Wales, we are already able to deliver on the three main areas of prevention, intervention and postvention. So if what we're trying to do is set up a network of people that are informed about this um, issue so that if there's people that are signposted to us, we can signpost them to you. If you'd like to um, have more information about that, again, if you contact us after this, um, session and we'll we'll look at how we can link in. Finally, I've put here some signs of use so that um, people can see uh, what you know if we're a parent or if there's people in services 
the signs of use, for instance, not sleeping or coming home, being agitated or twitching, sniffing, wiping nose more than usual, pup um, dilated um, pupils or red eyes is another sign, feeling anxious, remorseful, confused or severe mood changes, weird or erratic behaviour, more aggressive or violent, risky out of character choices, feels like hell and another big one is missing work at the beginning of the week. So if you see any of these signs, um, these are signs of cocaine use particularly. What you can do, um, you can talk about drug use and listen without judgment. It's a very hard thing to do. Um, you don't have to condone the use, but if you can provide a safe space, for them, if you can't, we have signposting where they can talk to people uh, on the last slide. Talk to them about the chemical come down and prepare a safety plan. Um, one of the, the, the most prevalent things that came out of the conference when we talked to the, 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 you know, the users and other people was to stay nearby and to stay with them during the come down, which we believe is um, it can be from an hour after they've taken the drug to a full day, maybe two days after until they've actually slept because the, the, the lack of sleep actually impacts their feelings of, um, of despair. So if you can stay near them, um, uh, you know, even sleep next to them and, and, and safeguard them, um, you know, we understand that they have this thinking that they're not going to, you know, that there's, you know, one one young man uh, in the 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 panel, he said about that his family were in the house, but he was so um, in this rolling despair that he he forgot they were there. Um, so you know, actually being with them at the time really does can help and make a difference. Get them to check in with their other mates as well to look out for each other. Suggest getting some sleep. We would not suggest taking anything else because what can happen, we've we've um, discovered um, some use of uh, downers or, or sleep, um, like Xanax and things like that, which people are, uh, again, obtaining illegally. Um, and, and the problem with that is it then adds to the poly drug use issues. So in some of the 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 other drugs that they're taking, I mean, we don't know what's in these drugs unless they've been tested. So there's every chance that there's other things in them that's going to make it even worse. So if they can get some sleep naturally um, and stay and again, stay with them. Try to get them to eat or drink a little bit, and that helps to flush things through. Reassure them that these feelings will pass. Check in on them if you notice they have, they are withdrawn or absent and signpost for help. You do not need to know what to do. You can also phone any of the helplines that we've got um, below the yellow line, which are helpline um, from Papyrus. They, if you're a parent or a friend or somebody who is, um, you know, just it doesn't know what to do, ring these people and they will help you. They will also help the person that's struggling. So, you know, if, if they can pass the phone to them, um, that ha that's the same with Hopeline and the Samaritans. Another good uh, line to to and resource to give them is the Dan 24-7, which is also the call helpline based in North Wales. They they have been trained in um, responding to the cocathylene issue and will be able to help them through uh, a crisis of that nature. 
I did mention before about the state uh, about making a safety plan. They can be downloaded freely from this site, which is Staying Safe. Um, and there's also uh, a Staying Alive app, which was, um, I believe it's been uh, developed by Grassroots Prevention Suicide, uh, Suicide Prevention and the Shout Helpline. There's also other numbers which are available on the CSA signpost or the co-op website. The Jacob Abraham and for Tom Foundation. Um, Jacob Abraham Foundation, if you need um, help during weekdays, they can um, assist with that. For Tom, um, they do some bereavement groups in the South Wales area, but we're happy to link in with anybody who needs any help. I'm going to turn the recording off now and then we can open it up for questions. Stop recording.